In this tutorial, we'll show how to download vCenter Server Appliance, set it up inside VMware Fusion, build a vCenter simulator inside that, set up a custom user, and alias the appliance to a fake DNS entry, all for the purpose of creating custom test environments for writing software against. On screen, we're running through really quickly the process for finding and downloading the vCenter server appliance. The process varies depending on your subscription level, and you may have to uh, subscribe for a trial version in order to get the appliance. Downloads can take quite a while, so I will skip ahead to using an archive, an open virtualization format archive file that I've already downloaded and we'll import that into VMware Fusion. You'll open up the virtual machine library and go to the add button. Here we'll use the import feature and we'll browse to where our file downloaded to. And we'll go ahead and click open on that and continue. Now we'll be given a chance to name the appliance, we'll call this VC Sim because this copy of vCenter server appliance will be using for running a simulator to simulate large amounts of inventory. Now once we have that loaded, we'll customize the settings. You can customize any of the settings that are here, visible here, but what you'll want to do is adjust the network adapter. We'll make this network privately only to this Mac. Um, if you did want to do something with DHCP over a shared network, you can generate a MAC address and use that for setting up DHCP. But uh, for our purposes, we'll just stick to MAC-only networking. And just because you've edited here doesn't mean you lose the ability to manipulate the virtual machine's uh, settings. But uh, again, the most important thing here is we're going to go with host-only networking. So we'll go ahead and launch the appliance. And again, this is VMware Fusion. We get a IP address here, and we'll go to port 5480. The IP addresses are relatively stable in um, Mac or host-only networking. Uh, the login here is the default login for the vCenter server appliance that should be in documentation should you need to uh, look it up. And we'll just accept all of the end user license agreements and uh, just go through a default setup of the vCenter server appliance. Again, configure default settings. And I'll go ahead and fast forward here a little bit as we set up the defaults. Okay, so your setup probably won't go that fast, but once you have uh, the vCenter server appliance up and running, and that IP address is relatively stable, we'll just SSH into the appliance, adding it to our SSH keys. Again, the default user and password for the appliance, and we'll add the user my user with the password my password now the reason we want to create a user for uh, our simulator is if we're creating fixtures or network recordings we don't want to accidentally record the username or password for some username or password that might actually happen in production which is why i don't use the default username or password in my tests so we'll just go ahead and really quickly here log into uh, the vCenter with the vSphere client. And you can see here, even though we've added that user, if you look under administrators, that, that username isn't listed under administrators. So we'll just go over to the local host here and we'll add permissions. We're going to add a new administrator, add, and we will look for on the server the user we just added. And that's my user, add them, OK, and go. And now they're in the list of admins. It's time to set up the actual vCenter simulator. So let's bring up the vCenter simulator um, 
tools that we'll need. Here's an SSH window open to the vCenter simulator or the vCenter appliance. And uh, if you take a look in here, uh, you'll see that there's a vSim directory. There's a model directory inside the vSim directory. Inside there, there's some .cfg files. These are sample configurations for the simulator that you can use. And for our purposes, let's copy off um, the default inventory and we'll call it myinventory.cfg. These are simple XML files. Uh, I need to schmod the XML file so I can actually edit it. So I'm just going to say all plus w so that way I can edit the file without having to override. And we'll just open v Vim. And I like to have a number of data centers in my tests. Common place for code to go wrong is the assumption that there's one data center. So I like to always make sure there's more than that. And then I also like to have a few uh, free floating uh, hosts outside of my clusters for testing and writing software. Because again, that's another common hang up that I've seen is uh, folks assume there are no um, free floating unmanaged or unclustered hosts. So we'll just increase the numbers on a few of these here. And I think we'll get ourselves a few DD port groups on here as well. And I like to set a uh, number of worker threads and I like to set synchronous to false. And the reason I do that is with synchronous as false, the inventory will be populated asynchronously from the, the uh, VPX daemon startup time. And it's a little entertaining to watch, plus it's uh, also a little faster than waiting on everything uh, to, come, to come up. So once we've got our nice inventory set up, inventory model there in that simple XML, we'll hop up to the Etsy VMware VPX directory and edit the appropriate config file here, the vpxd.cfg, and you'll probably enter at the top of the file, but where we want to insert this as, uh, uh, is at the bottom of the file right after the close tag for vpxd. And this is the simulator tag. This will set up the simulator config, and we're going to say enabled true. This turns on the simulator within vCenter. And then we're going to point to our init uh, inventory that we just built. And if I can remember how to use VI here, there we go. I'll put it in. And inventory CFG. And make sure we close the tags. And here we go. We'll close the simulator tag. Checking over everything one more time. Make sure that we've actually got everything lined up properly. True. Clear DB false. We want to set clear DB to false because we don't want um, the database wiped every time, otherwise we'd have to set up that user every pass. And we need to edit the file path there. Okay, great. So now we have the file path. The, this path can be actually a relative path. It doesn't have to be an absolute path. So I'll go back and edit this to be a relative path, just to give us less to read. And we'll write that and okay. Now then, what we need to do is we need to stop the VPXD service. And this can take a few seconds. And once that's stopped, we're going to ask VPXD to rebuild its database with the dash B tag on the end of the VPX command. Once we have that in place, uh, now we can restart the service. So OK, now we can start the service. We should get a new service up and running. OK. And now we should be able to log in using our vSphere client. And because I said that the uh, inventory population was going to be asynchronous, we'll get to watch the uh, inventory pop into existence on the vCenter. And that can be somewhat entertaining. Since then, you'll notice here localhost now has inventory in it. And 
think you should start to observe inventory populating into this copy of the, of, the, of the center. It can take some time for the population of, uh, of the inventory. Um, I recommend that also because if you're developing software against vCenter to do a few things like add some folders here. I'll add a folder, I'll call it a bad folder, and I'll add an empty data center or something like that just so we have some additional inventory in here outside of what you might normally expect and that's just uh, so that way when we're writing our software um, to look at property collectors or things like that or look at the inventory um, you know we have some other things um, in there that might be outside of what you would normally expect to find or what you might normally define as the output of the simulator you can interact with this inventory pretty much like you would interact with uh, any inventory. And once uh, the simulator's uh, set up here and done running, um, you'll have a certain population of uh, virtual machines that aren't real and hosts and clusters that aren't real that you'll be able to play around with. This uh, turns out to be a really valuable tool for anyone who's writing software against uh, vSphere because what you're writing is the interface software. You don't need to be writing uh, full tests. You don't need full hardware to test against. Now that we uh, have this environment, you'll probably want to make it easy to get to. So what I usually do, take the IP address and put it in Etsy hosts, alias to VCSA. That way you can ping it from VCSA. Thanks for watching and whatever integration you're working on, I hope that you find that the VC uh, simulator is actually really useful. Uh, you can simulate much larger inventories and stranger inventories then you might be able to with a small amount of testing hardware. Either way, happy hacking.